Yeah. Mm. Well, it sounds good. Um, you see that uh, obviously you don't have to stop bottles of the museum gas and the idea of the bar glass and the, the, the colour in the stock bottles is different. So even though they're all being preserved with brandy, um, yeah, the water that goes in the stock bottles of brandy is, is different with each flower. So you get really light coloured essences and really dark coloured essences. Mm -hmm. We do have the bark essences here, um, so when you make up your treatment bottle, you're welcome to use those as well. Um, you've got your chart that has the correlating ones that you can use. So if you already know some bark ones, totally cool, use those or, um, or whatever you want to do. But um, you'll, see the, you'll see the different colours in those bark flowers because the bottles are clear. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be some cellular activity too, because uh, you say like when water touches anything, it picks up molecules or whatever it touches. So it's not, it can't, it might not just be vibrational, it could be cellular as well? Um, I don't really know enough about yeah. cellular biology to sort that, That's my only concern, yeah. I guess, if you were making your own and you feel a vibration of a particular flower in your neighbourhood, is there any chance of toxicity, you know, like poisoning from... Oh, potentially, I suppose yeah. if it's being yeah. roadside spraying or... Um, Drift from from nitrogen fertilizer or something like that. Oh, yeah. That work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a possibility, and that's another reason why I trust that what's being presented here. I mean, it's collected from the Uruwera's um, in Lake around Lake Waikere Moana. It's very, it's one of the most left alone parts of Aotearoa that we've got left. Um, yeah. yeah I Um, you'll, you'll really enjoy this author, um, Bruce Lipton. Yeah. Um, he's got a book called um, Biology of Belief, and he looks at he's a um, he's a he was teaching medical students in the US, but he's also I can't remember right now exactly, but he's a cellular he knows stuff about cells and energy. So um, <laughs> um, yeah, check him out, um, Biology of Belief. Um, and he does explain in there yeah. a lot um, to do with quantum physics, and I think that's where you'll probably find your answer. You will always need a vessel to carry the essence. Until you get to the stage of the the vessel anymore, that needs a certain amount of spiritual development for us, and most of us will not get there in this lifetime. So we need something tangible to be able to go yeah. across and, and, and move into that path. That's why we've got something that we can hang on to. Yeah, you know, ten years I used these remedies for my newborn, and I just left the proper bottle in his cot with him. Oh, didn't put it on the skin, nothing. The energy will come across, but you still need a, a vehicle to put it in. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Just like we need bodies to be spiritual beings of a body, you know? Yeah. Have that energy. My, um, uh, well, Sorry, I'll just mention this quickly. Um, when I've had trouble getting to sleep, I've um, called in the energy of Matata, which is that monkey mind circular thought. Mm -hmm. oh, I should have done that thing. Oh, hang on, I've got that to do tomorrow. Oh, I should have said, I should have said that when that lady said that to me. You know, that kind of thing that goes over and over. Mm -hmm. um, and I've called in the intention to, to bring that energy into to health, and it, it works for me. Um, it's that. Um, when you think about Masuri Emoto, again, you know, you've got that intention, that energy, that, that the, the love and the soup. Um, yeah, so that can be something that you guys could, could experiment with as well. Are you cold? Oh. <laughs> Is anyone else cold? Mm. We can turn it off. Yeah, turn it off for a bit if you want. Mm. Um, I'm not melting. <laughs> um, I feel like, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great. Cool. My mum, a few years ago, um, has so I started doing my studies, so I'm a bit bad with the details, but she read a book, and I'm, I'm sure it was called The Secret Life of Plants, and I remember her just showing me a wee snippet of the chapter that she was reading at the time, and um, these people had managed to, they were, they were hooking the plants up to, to whatever they needed to, where they were, they were measuring the frequencies that the plants 
were emitting. So I take that as essentially their energy. And it sounds terrible, but what they did is they had they had two plants of the same sitting side by side, and one of them they were like going in there and breaking its leaves off and and taking its flowers off and ripping it and just being horrid to it. And the the frequencies were changing, and then these people. Um, they left the room and left them by themselves. It sounds ridiculous, but this is what it was. And then they come back in, and um, the the frequencies that they were they letting off were like they were raging through the roof. Like if this plant could get up and run, it would have. It was it was like it totally changed it versus the one that they were picking on kind of thing. And it was just it's I don't know. I was so I was so interested with people who choose vegetarianism or veganism mm -hmm. because well they don't want to hurt an animal. I'm like. But you're hurting plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what can I eat? It must have all to do with intention, though, because I mean, when you're like wanting to prune something, that helps it to grow more. So, yeah, yeah. They, you know, they just, it's, I guess it's just how you yeah. kind of approach it, you know, whether I'm like, I'm going to rip this off you. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. like you versus I'm going to eat this basil leaf because I enjoy it. And I'm not going to kill the plant yeah. by doing it because yeah. I'm going to get yeah. 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 Thank you for nourishing me. Yeah, yeah. 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 And another um, <laughs> a random thing, I grow lots of veggies and stuff, and I start a lot of them in, you know, the, the sea potters that have like 24 little compartments. And um, I had them all separate, and then Hazel, bless her, knocked them all over and before anything had started coming out. So I was just like, oh, I just scattered seeds back in there and let anything grow where it might have. And amongst them, there were peas, and they started coming up like randomly through different places. But you know how they climb, and they've got little vines and mm -hmm. tentacles that link. And they started growing and climbing, and they would they would go over other plants to find each other to to link onto. And I was like, taking photos because I was like, how do they know? How do they know that they're skipping the parsley to get to this other? It's like yeah, it's yeah, it's what it's, it's called. Yeah, yeah, I'll write it down it's so cool. you can check it out. Um, plant wisdom. It was so no, no one else found, like no one else looked enjoyed looking at the photos. <laughs> 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 I'm doing this. Oh, I'm going to talk about how to talk about <laughs> plants. Don't so worry, um, the the way they also work together. They mm. also work together as a team, and that's part of why they're a healing cord as well. They do have they have got that connection and that support um, that they provide for each other, which makes them a bit more robust than just a single healing note. So. Um, because New Zealand's such a young country, we weren't really discovered, we haven't really been messed with a lot um, in, in, a worldwide, in a perspective of a worldwide sense. So um, we do have some of the most ancient, untouched forests on the planet. Um, they've just been left to do their thing. They've, that we've, New Zealand was so separate from, from the rest of the world when it was developing that it's, it's got, it's really, it is really special. Um, and the ecosystem of that is based on cooperation. So, um, what I mean by that is they are, um, I wrote this down so I could not miss anything. So they, um, so the established trees will create shade that will be, create the right environment for plants underneath to grow, for those ferns and mosses and, and all those things down there. Um, they create that supportive environment and they literally help other plants to stand up for themselves. Um, which is what your mm. vine reminded me of. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, that kind of cooperation doesn't happen in other forests or other um, places in the world. There's no um, toxic warfare, and what I mean by that is um, some plants can secrete a enzyme or a, a oil um, that can inhibit the growth of other plants around it. So pine trees are notorious for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, they have an acidic um, quality to their foliage, but when that drops, it makes the soil um, inhabitable for most other plants. So it's like all, <laughs> all the resources are mine. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so, and it's also got a giant tap root, which is, um, goes, so you've seen, if you pulled your parsley plant out and seen the, or dock, and seen that big tap root that goes down, um, that is anchors it into the ground and, and, and um, also means that it can go a bit deeper than other plants to get water and nutrients and, and resources. So none of the New Zealand plants have that. They actually share the bacteria in the soil um, and they, they make their own little ecology in the soil which supports each other. Um, the roots go outward yeah, and they share not only that bacteria but there's fungi as well that they, they work with together. Um, so that's another thing that makes them pretty special and they're all helping each other out. They're working together as a team and that energy just comes through in the flowers and in the plants. 
Julie? So I was just thinking, you know, you're talking about bacteria and fungi, but when we take a lot of um, antibiotics or whatever you get, thrush, we get um, candida, which I've had severely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking like so many of our plants are, are getting this fungi now, like this black fungi that's spreading around the zone, and others like the colourful fungi and what have you. And, I mean, to me, it, it, to my thoughts, it's coming from the, the what we're doing. Oh yeah, you know, we're, like, yeah. like food. It's not imbalanced. Right. Yeah, it's like your digestive flora. Um, to get to get to that point, would there be a lot of imbalance happening? Yeah, certainly. And certainly, it happens outside of our bodies and in other areas where those kind of microbes are. Yeah, yeah, that um, carry that carry fungus um, definitely. And even in our waterways, you know that. Um, Dynamo and, and these kinds of things that are just signs of our imbalances on the planet that are happening. Mm. Um, so the other thing that makes New Zealand plants really special is that um, the flowers are usually uh, are usually white, and and that's a colour of purity and and, um, and high vibration. Um, but also white because the way that a lot of our flowers are pollinated is nocturnally by moths and insects. So um, when it's night time. The, the, and there's some moonlight out, those flowers are quite outstanding and, and the insects can, can get in there to pollinate them. Um, and because those flowers are, uh, they're not big showy, um, <laughs> colourful Mardi Gras flowers, they're kind of, um, they're, they're quite a little powerhouse of energy. They're quite compact, they're, um, they are, yeah, they're, they're sort of, the energy is really, really in there, that vigour, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, another thing that makes our native plants special is that they don't lose their leaves in winter. They retain their energy all year round. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other plants on the on native plants on the planet that, that have that kind of fluctuation of energy, whereas our plants have it all the time, native plants. Um, and these things always seem to say that only in the community. Yeah, um, pretty much. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah, most of them are. But that's the only one. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Oh, oh, sorry, we're tired of you. You don't pronounce the foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they're pretty cool. That's pretty special, really. Um, so, um, we've kind of covered this a little bit um, with the, the personality types. Um, and how each of the 36 flowers relates to a personality type. And so you probably remember from your study or, um, that there are two essences in Bach's range that don't correlate to the personalities. Can anyone remember what those two are? Stars, Stars, like Star, Star and Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Rock Rose. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Grab a seat, I'm still yattering. <laughs> cool. So, the reason that those um, Rock Rose and Star of Bethlehem aren't considered a personality state is because they're used in emergencies. They're used in that sort of time where um, people aren't in that state of terror or shock all the time. Some, yeah, all the time is their personality. So that's why they're not considered to be um, part of that, part of that per the personality types. Yeah. So um, when we talk about a keynote, um, and can you guys read your... So, um, oh, I've got it up here. so when we talk about your keynote, it's in relation to um, to kind of the year that you were born and the kind of planetary energies that are around at that time, based on um, the science of astrology and where those things are in the sky. So that's why they're broken down into that zodiac group. Um, so the thing about keynotes is that um, I really recommend you always put a person's keynote into the blend. Um, because it's always going to bring balance to the challenges they have with their own personality. Um, so, who knows what their keynote is? Pahuta Kala. Pahuta Kala. Would you like to share with us if, what, how, anything uh, about that? I don't know, I just know what it's called. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got Harakeke, which is the native flats. Yeah. And uh, should I say what the challenges are then? And um, yeah, definitely. Apparently, influence is through impatience, irritability, tense, abrupt, frustration, exaggerates reactions. 
So a native flax personality is usually, it can be someone who's quite enthusiastic when they're into something. And it's like, oh my god, did you see that movie? It was so good. It, it was so exciting. Oh, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to come with me. You've got to come and see the movie. You know, that can kind of be a native flax um, picture as well. So um, that corresponds with Bach's essence of impatience. So um, impatience, or how you say it, but that kind of impatience is a bit of a clue. So that can maybe help you remember one of the essences um, for an assessment later on, or for, for something for your client. So if somebody's really um, you know, um, irritable, impatient, come on, come on, let's go. Um, impatience can be a remedy, a bark remedy that would work for them, and correlating to that native flax um, first light one. Yeah. Do you um, need, have you got all your notes and your bits in the book? I've got my box. Yeah. Um, okay. With these, if you're like on the coast, like mine reads from January the 10th, and so I'm on the 10th. Oh, yeah. Um, in the Capricorns. So, like, I'm the 10th, and then you think, oh, well, maybe if I look at the one before, what's that? You know, is, is that, is like the same as with your photo? Kind of so, um, yeah, that's a really good point. So, you probably find that um, you resonate both with, with both of them, maybe even all three. Um, you know, and, and if, if you're finding that a person's only got a couple of areas of focus, so you, you can choose up to eight flower essences maximum to put in someone's blend. So if, if you find that a person's um, only got, you've only got two that you've found you think would be really good work for them, you can put in all three of their keynote essences. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that can be quite effective. But um, yeah, looking at that main keynote, um, take, take a minute now to look at your own, and then we might share as a group. So you can use the, um, use the textbook here as well, if you want
So just another minute or so, and then we'll have a bit of a chat. these on to you, to you guys and why we've sourced these because it's quite helpful just to 